Thank you that you hear our prayer. Thank you that in hearing you understand. You accept the cries of our hearts. Thank you that when we pray in faith, believing, then you promise you will hear from heaven and you will answer our cries. And so we pause to say thank you that you have heard. Thank you that you are actively at work in our nation. Thank you for all that's been done. Thank you for our government and the work that they have done, the, the approach that they have taken and studiously with their professional teams done so much to help Father to guide a nation to do the wise and practical things. But yet, O oh Lord God, we understand our human limitations. And so, Lord, we stand on behalf of our people. And again, this morning, Lord, has been done so many times over these weeks. We repent of our sins. We repent of the sins of the nation. We acknowledge that we and our people have sinned. And we thank you that in your goodness and mercy, you have forgiven us of our sins. Because you took our sins in your body, nailing it to the tree. We thank you for that, Lord. So our sins issue was dealt with in the victory of the cross. So again, we appeal your mercy, your mercy, your mercy. And so, Lord, visit and bring a great deliverance to this nation. And we will be careful to give all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because we see your good hand actively at work. We are seeing your mercies before us, Lord. You, now you who have begun a good work, see it to the finish, because we're giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We encourage you, continue to pray prayers of thanksgiving and praise. Continue to affirm that God has heard. That is your affirming your faith. Because if you believe, then you must pray as if you believe. That you believe that what you have asked, that God has heard and he has done it. So therefore, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Hallelujah. I want to share with you a couple of minutes what I believe is very, very important because we have been praying, crying out to this great God, this God in whom we have absolute confidence that when we pray, we are not just carrying out an exercise of fertility, but it is a prayer out of a confidence that God is God. He is Lord of all. And when we pray in faith, believing that he hears and answers from heaven. And so it is with that confidence that we come again this morning. And so I want to say to you that I stand as a servant of the living God. I stand here this morning representing the kingdom nation, the kingdom of the living God, our God, our Lord, our Savior. I stand equally as a mouthpiece on behalf of the leaders, Christian leaders all across the nation and saints across the nation who have been praying in faith, who have agonized before God, who have cried out to the living God. And so I stand representing all leaders across the country today who have been in faith and who know that our God has heard and answered prayer. And so therefore I want to share with you the position that a number of us as leaders of the church, the independent churches of Jamaica and many others stand with us in a clear position of our faith, of our confidence in God because we want you to know that God 
has heard. Oh, this morning, beloved, God is for us. God is for you. God cares about you. And what God wants is for you to draw near to him. He wants to build a relationship with you. He wants you to know him, not just as God in the heavens, but he wants you to know him as Lord of your life. He wants you to know him as the savior of your life. And he wants you to see him as your mighty deliverer. And so here I share, on behalf of our leaders, the word of the Lord that we believe is important to us in Jamaica today. So I want you to know that God's goodness is a nation's hope. These are challenging times for the world. The advent of COVID-19 has affected the world, bringing most nations almost to a halt in an effort to control its spread and to protect from loss of life. We certainly want to offer condolences to those around the world who have lost loved ones. And we speak a word of healing and of comfort and of grace into their lives. The fear of this disease has created much dislocation and disruption of economies with increasing hardships on the people, especially those that are most vulnerable and the poor in our society. But as spiritual leaders in our nation, we believe that COVID-19 is an evil thing that has come upon our nation. It's aim to kill and to destroy. Therefore, it is not a blessing, but a curse. Hence, it is our responsibility to resist it, to fight it, and to pray for its permanent removal from our shores. We cannot allow it to devastate our health and the fragile economy that we are at great pains and at a point of showing real growth, but the enemy would want to reverse, to destroy. But because it is an evil attack, one that is not of our nation's making, it involves the negative action of men violating the laws of nature as created by God. We can pray, we can declare and act in faith for its removal. We have taken the time to carefully analyze the COVID-19 from various angles, listening to the scientific, to the medical, to the economic, and hear all those perspectives. And then we have taken time to add the spiritual perspective, which we believe supersedes them all. So we aim at best to see the earliest solution to this problem. That's how we have been praying. And we now, we know, and we believe that all natural occurrences, come on saints, understand this and citizens of our nation, we know and believe that all natural occurrences also have a spiritual dimension as its root. It is therefore our responsibility to interpret, inform, and produce outcomes for the good of all. Since the announcement of this virus that can be classified biblically as a pestilence, we have engaged in consultations and implemented a prayer strategy to defeat the virus in our nation. We do believe that it is only in the power of the name of Jesus Christ that the most effective solution can be found to undergird our medical professionals and government's action. This is the prerogative and the responsibility of Christian leaders in every nation. Christian leaders in every nation must take the responsibility to deal with it in and over their nation, as we believe we must do over our nation. 
because we have been given authority and dominion in the earth. And as such, we must in wisdom speak into the situations that negatively impact our nation. So we affirm that our Prime Minister, the Minister of Health and their teams have been doing an absolutely excellent job governmentally. And we will continue to give our support to their efforts. But we believe and affirm to the nation of Jamaica that the outbreak of this virus is not the direct judgment of God on Jamaica or the world. We repeat, this is the result of diabolic, satanic activities in the hearts and minds of selfish men transgressing the laws of God and nature, which carry natural consequences as we are seeing it. Their actions have disrupted the order of nature and releasing what is being called a virus. This virus is an alien intrusion into the human body, which is designed by God to fight and to reject all alien intrusion. But the ability to do so depends on the strength of one's immune system to defeat it or to succumb to it. So we believe that this event of the coronavirus worldwide marks a new era in what the Bible calls the end times. And that we therefore will see similar and other perilous times yet to come in our world. But there are other sinister motives attached to this declared pandemic that it is important to make a clear and definitive statement as church leaders, and that is simply for us to say that if at, at any time in these end time days going into the future, as a church, we will stand against principles and statutes contrary to God's word and the best interests of our people, because our allegiance is to our triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to you further then that we believe Jamaica cannot sustain this enemy attack on our people, on our economy, and the suffering it will increase on the poor. Hence, we have prayed for it to pass over as the church celebrates, move towards celebrating the Passover in each, at Easter because Jesus died for us to have victory over every plan and scheme of the enemy. That's what Passover is about, that Jesus having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. The scriptures that says with clarity that the Son of Man was made manifest that he should destroy the works of the devil and Jesus by the power of his resurrection defeated the enemy and it is in his victory that we stand today. And so in this regard, we invite the government of Jamaica and their teams to continue doing all the necessary checks in addition to retesting the infected people, ensuring that these individuals are clear and be able to confirm. So we want to hear from our government to confirm that there are no new cases rising, but that indeed the curve will flatten out so that we can begin to see the back of this thing. That's what we are believing and declaring. So therefore, with that kind of confidence in our God, the God who hears and answers prayer, we are happy as the servants of the living God, the kingdom of God in this nation. We are happy to declare to our nation that the power and the effects of COVID-19 have been defeated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have in faith destroyed it so that the venom will no further cripple our nation. 
our nation can now begin as guided by our government to prepare for the post-COVID era. Prepare to live life after COVID. We will not remain trapped by it indefinitely. So we will continue to do spiritual, spiritual exercises, to pray, to intercede, to do what we must by and through prayer. In our spiritual authority we stand. We will continue acts of service has been going on by so many churches all across the nation, meeting the needs of the poor, helping in practical ways. We'll continue certainly to do that. We'll continue to make ourselves available as the church to serve national development. So therefore, I ex exhort you this morning, let us as a nation give thanks to our Lord who has heard our cries and helped us to overcome by the power of his resurrection. Beloved, we say to you, the venom is broken over Jamaica. And we will now begin to see the end of this thing because Jehovah has heard our cry. Jehovah has answered because Jehovah, he is God. And no weapon that is formed against us can prosper. Have faith in God and be expectant of what you will see God continue to do for us. Let's give him the praise.